it's still a really broad game. Uh, it's, it's a game that is still too big to see probably your first time through. So, and, and we, that's an element that we thought was integral to the DR license. We thought it was great that you had to, uh, you know, you can play through once and try to, to, try to uh, finish the storyline, but you may want to go through again and try to save all the survivors and just see all of the different things and side scoops that you might have uh, missed the first time through. I think replay was something that a lot of players liked uh, about the first one. Biggest point that we wanted to emphasize when we first uh, discussed a sequel with Blue Castle uh, was that it should be a game that takes place over 72 hours, just like the original. Uh, it's that you being able to do whatever you want to within the allotted time uh, that sort of creates the uh, Dead Rising-esque uh, nature to the game. So that's one area that we agreed right from the start and absolutely needed to be in the game. The goals for co-op, I mean, the, the co-op itself was such a huge, huge goal for us. Um, you know, that, that, it, that it play well, that it function well, that you be, be able to uh, invite a friend uh, drop in and drop out. Uh, that was that was really important to us, but also that you know the experience was was positive for both players in terms of advancement in the game. Co-op was always something for us that was a necessity right from the start. So we aligned, you know, our, our, our team technically to be able to achieve that. So technical wasn't an issue for us. It was it was commit committed on right right from the start. But when a host uh, invites a, a friend and a guest uh, in into their game. Their benefit is that they now he he now has two people uh, helping against the storyline. So the host keeps uh, keeps the story. They own the story. So if they needed help getting past a particular part, um, they can call a friend in, uh, and he keeps that storyline. He keeps all the PP and and, and cash and uh, uh, and combo weapons he discovers. But also the guest when he leaves, he uh, while he doesn't own the story, he does own all of the PP that he's earned, all of the combo weapons, and uh, and all the cash he's earned as well. It was sort of like our dream to be able to add that mode to the game, and uh, we've been able to accomplish that with Dead Rising 2, which is great. Dead Rising 2 is one of those titles that we feel a lot of people are looking forward to and as time has gone on that anticipation has continued to grow and some of the things people are looking for, better graphics, better gameplay, etc. Those are no-brainers, those are areas of course we're going to put into the game. But specifically today, some of the things we're able to show off that I'm incredibly proud of is that if you just look at the character detail, if you look at the animations, if you look at the quality of the textures, all of them have improved over the original, which is nothing special necessarily for a sequel of a game to have. But on top of that, we have been able to throw in a lot more zombies. Roughly about 14 times the maximum number of zombies we were able to put in the original game, we were able to put in this. And that of course ties into loads of different gameplay that you can have being surrounded by many more zombies. It's going to make it just a more wild and frantic game and we think people are really going to enjoy it. When uh, talking about what sort of engine we used for Dead Rising 2, we in fact decided to go with not using the internal Capcom engine, which is known as the MT framework. And the reason for this is that Blue Castle Games said they wanted to make an engine that was made specifically for Dead Rising, that would allow us to put in things that Dead Rising would need to have, a large number of zombies, things like procedural cutting, things that would be specific to that game. And at first, to be honest, I was extremely nervous about allowing another company to use their own technology, their own engine, to build it from the ground up. Time-wise, wasn't going to make it scheduled, et cetera. There's a lot of things to be afraid of, but they came out and did everything that we imagined and even more. And this engine, because it is Dead Rising specific, has helped us make a game that is improving almost in every way upon the original. When you think about it, the MT framework that Capcom uses is developed for multi-platform development. So whether it's 360 or PlayStation 3 or PC, all of these can lock in as modules into the design. And it's also something that's supposed to work with all of our games. And anytime you have an engine like that, that is something that caters to all games instead of a single specific game, it starts to dilute what you can do and makes it harder to make an engine shine based on a single game's gaming elements. Dead Rising 
It's a very unique and actually very difficult game to both produce and design because it was initially developed out of Japan based on what we thought were Western sensibilities. And just from a merely Japanese perspective, you look at the game, not a lot of Japanese producers would want to produce it because it would not be popular in Japan in the first place. And they don't know what Western sensibilities are in the second place. So I waited and waited and waited for a producer to appear who said, I want to do Dead Rising 2, but no one did. And I got to the point where I'm like, well, I can't wait anymore. If no one else is going to do it, I'll do it. So that's why you're getting Dead Rising 2 now. And the reason why we decided to go with a Western developer is that although we made Dead Rising 1 a game that felt like it was kind of based in some Western sensibilities, I didn't feel like we went all the way. I didn't feel like we jumped all the way in and were as innovative as we could have been. And one of the things that held us back was the fact that it was totally a Japanese design team and they're not Westerners. So however much they try to copy those sensibilities, they're not going to be able to get down to the true core of what makes a Western game tick necessarily. And so with this one, I knew what I wanted to do especially was go all out and therefore that would require us to use a Western developer. We began looking around a lot of different Western developers, but it's hard to find a developer that's going to be the perfect match, that's going to be able to compromise and respect your design sensibilities as well as allow you to respect theirs as well. Fortunately, we came across Blue Castle Games, and when meeting with them, the CEO said to me, you know, Dead Rising 1 is a great game, and one of the great things about it is it does feel a little Japanese. And so right then and there I realized that we could respect each other's culture and we could compromise to make the best game possible. It was going to be necessary to have someone with that sort of an open mind in order to make both cultures work together the right way. I initially had the concept, I initially had the story already floating around in my mind of what I thought a sequel to Dead Rising should be. And when we approached Blue Castle and talked over the story, they bounced some ideas off of us. We changed some of the ideas that we had in mind. And so what you're seeing right now is probably about 50% of the original story of what I thought. And again, that represents the perfect amount of compromise. That we may have an idea or a concept that we think really works, but upon listening to some of the ideas that Blue Castle Games had, that helped us take the story in different directions and make it even better, and certainly make it more accessible than what we initially had. To give you a brief overview of what the story is in the game right now, it's been several years after the Willamette incident occurred, which of course forms the basis of the story in the original game. Now, part two takes place in a city known as Fortune City, which is basically like a casino town similar to Las Vegas. The main character, Chuck Green, who is a motocross champion, finds himself wrapped up in an incident that occurs at Fortune City which also involves the spread of zombies anew in this location. And as you proceed through the game, you're going to find out what exactly is going on and how Chuck plays a role in what's going on in Fortune City. The platforms that we're currently developing on are PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and PC. Any future platforms right now are still something we're considering and aren't ready to announce at this point. But if the story is great, if the game is great, there's always the possibility to take it to other platforms. The name of the game is Dead Rising 2, and as much as we are working as hard as we can and as quickly as we can, a release in 2009 is probably not going to be possible. So we are working to get it out as soon as possible, but it most likely will not be out this year. That's the one thing I want listeners to take away. I'm Rob Barrett, uh, executive producer at Blue Castle Games. We knew we wanted co-op right from the start, uh, I think because we were all fans of the first game and we wanted to do that too. And I think, uh, I think Capcom originally wanted to do it as well and didn't, uh, didn't have the time to get it in there. So we knew that uh, such a dense world, such a humor-filled world would be uh, perfect for that co-op experience. I think it just changes in, uh, from a social aspect mainly. I mean, there are the elements of, of helping a friend. If somebody's stuck, you can ask a, ask a buddy to come in and help you with a particular story part. But uh, 
the, the real big difference between single player and, and the co-op is just that social aspect. Everyone who watches the game right now and just sees how how fun it is and, and, uh, and humorous it is to, to do these crazy things as zombies, whether you're going to beat a zombie to death with a potted plant or whether you're going to take the time to find chainsaws and a paddle to make a, a paddle saw. It's just funner with, uh, with another person. The single player experience though is just, it's incredibly deep as well. Uh, the advantage of, of co-op, like I said, is getting past the big challenges. You know, some bosses, even now as we develop, uh, the game. There's some bosses that always seem to have my number, but other people seem to have an easy time fighting them, and there's other ones that I'm better at. So you can use that that uh, the co-op system to help get past those elements. Um, but there's also uh, two people playing together. It can generate far more PP and and uh, and level their guys up a hell of a lot faster. I, I wouldn't say that there's any of the combo weapons uh, that are specifically made uh, for the co-op experience. Uh, that's where we, we lean more to the luring weapons and some of the luring weapons are made from, from combination uh, weapons as well but what they do is allow uh, one or both of the players to, to set out these lures whether it's firecrackers that attract zombies and you'll see the zombies all coming in from different directions as soon as you put one of these luring items out there uh, and you just get this mass concentration of zombies and then it's up to you what you're going to do with them. Coming up with the combo weapons was, was a lot of fun. It was hard work, but it was, uh, it was certainly a lot of fun. A lot of uh, whiteboarding, a lot of uh, going down to the hardware store and looking at, at all these items that we might combine. But uh, there's so many that are fun. I like, uh, I like the electro rake. It's simple, the car battery with the rake. Um, that one's a lot of fun. The Tesla ball, maybe it's the electricity thing I'm, I'm liking, but uh, you get a big thick uh, pile of zombies together and throw that Tesla ball in, they all drop. Uh, from all the arcing electricity, it's a lot of fun. Trying to make sure that we were covering, uh, in the in the range of co-op weapons, that we were covering both, you know, uh, incredibly effective weapons for killing zombies, but also making sure we maintained humor, humorous weapons as well, uh, weapons that humiliate zombies, and, and just a huge variety. All that was important to us was that uh, the world was different enough that it supplied you uh, an opportunity to have uh, new and different weapons. With the idea that uh, anything and everything is a weapon, it really, uh, it's the world that defines uh, what, what is going to be a weapon at that point. I'm not too worried about people seeing everything the first time through because we never plan for people to see everything the first time through. Just like the first game, it's, it's a really unique action game in that uh, there's not many action games that allow you to, uh, to grind. Um, it's got this, this, that weird almost RPG element where if you start to struggle against the story you can just go kill zombies for a while and level up and just do crazy stuff to get your level up and then, um, and then you do the new game plus uh, to allow people to go through. So we would expect just like the first game, people will want to play through the game uh, multiple times. Dead Rising 2 uh, will release on August 31st in North America on uh, PS3, Xbox 360 and PC. Uh, in Dead Rising 2, you control the main character Chuck Green. Chuck Green is a motocross uh, racer, and he finds himself in Fortune City, which is a casino town, uh, which largely, uh, also one of the things that's fam famous of the city is that there is a gigantic game show called Terror is Reality, and Chuck Green finds himself unknowingly being a participant in this uh, game show. And one of the key uh, plot points that you will find out as you play the game is why Chuck Green has to participate uh, in this game show. Definitely one of the things people seemed to like with the first Dead Rising game was the fact that there were multiple endings. Um, and so I personally uh, would love to be able to put in multiple endings uh, in this game. Um, we haven't officially gotten to that point uh, in the game where we decide one way or the other. So all I can say right now is that it's my desire to be able to do that uh, in the game, but at this point I can't officially say yes or no. Concerning the number of different um, contests that you'll be able to compete in uh, within the Terror is Reality game show, uh, of course, downstairs uh, you can already play four different contests. Um, 
it's probably going to be more than that. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be a number bigger than five, six, etc. Uh, there's definitely going to be a lot in the game. That's what we're aiming for right now. But I can say this, of the, the games downstairs, my favorite is definitely the final round game uh, in which you use the chainsaw on the bike. Just because it's something that's very intuitive and simple. Anybody can jump right on the bike and just be going around slashing zombies and just have a really good time with it. Of course, um, with Dead Rising 1, since it was such a big hit, you'd think there's a lot of pressure, but rather than thinking about the pressure uh, that comes with making Dead Rising 2, uh, I felt more of an obligation uh, that we had to make a game that the users, that the end users were going to appreciate. They've been waiting a long time for a sequel, uh, and so I just wanted to really knock it out of the park. So um, I'm proud of what we've been able to create, and it just took bravery. Sometimes you just gotta do it, and we were able to do it, I think, with this game. First of all, thanks very much for speaking to us in the san Let's begin with uh, Dead Rising. You are uh, working with a Western developer, Blue Castle Games, for this one. What has that experience been like for you? It's going great. At first, you know, there were some difficulties as we transitioned uh, into working together. Uh, but uh, after that uh, initial period, I could really see how dedicated they were towards the quality of the title and how passionate they were. Uh, and then they could see how serious we were about working with them. Uh, and we were really able to, to create uh, a very productive uh, relationship, and it's been great working with them. So Dead Rising was a, a big hit for the company. How protective of you uh, were you of the, uh, the IP when you handed it over to Blue Castle Games? Were you uh, fairly tight with the sort of creative control that you gave to them? Yeah, I uh, yeah, there was there was no specific restrictions. In fact, I didn't treat it as a situation in which, because it's a uh, important IP, we have to do it in house. The fact of the matter is, is we have uh, a ton of great IPs here at Capcom, and if we had to do all of them in house at, at Osaka, we wouldn't be able to make as many titles with all these IPs as we want. So it was a, a, a situation in which I needed to be able to get past that to entrust a Western to develop it with an important IP, and I think that we were very successful. You're seeing with a lot of uh, Western developers um, uh, branching out, uh, branching their games out into other media to actually make them into franchises, so you know, animated um, short films or movies or that type of thing. Uh, like, how big a focus is that for Capcom? I understand you're still working on a Dead Rising movie, is that right? Uh, yeah, we certainly feel like we want to uh, leverage those kind of opportunities with uh, a Capcom IP in the future as well. We've already announced uh, a Lost Planet movie in Hollywood, and uh, you may be aware that you know I personally did a uh, Dead Rising uh, short film uh, for, for, for this title. So we certainly want to uh, leverage that even more so than Western publishers going forward. One last, so the final question is... Um Capcom in recent years have seen a lot of success in, I guess, reviving uh, old franchises like uh, Street Fighter 4, uh, you have uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 3 coming out. Uh, what's the next big franchise we can expect from um, Capcom that you'll be resurrected? Hello. A lot of ideas and things that we're kind of working over, uh, uh, and I'm thinking a lot of things in my head. But uh, you know, obviously, I can't tell you m many details here on the spot. What I will say is that you know, it's great to have feedback from from gamers. So uh, you know, if, if gamers can say go to Gamespot and say what kind of franchise would you like Capcom to resurrect? What's your, what are your favorite past Capcom franchises? Then I'll take that feedback, and that'll help make me you know help me to decide uh, what what might be another good franchise to do. Put my vote in for Dark Souls. Put my vote in for Dark Stalkers, please. Uh, ano, Dark Stalker, ano vampire no kato game. Dark Stalker, ni ipio ip, ipio iremasu to. I know my way around a zombie or two. My name is Keiji Inohune, and I am the uh, global head of R&D for Capcom. Uh, we are currently uh, in the process of finishing up Dead, uh, Dead Rising 2 for Xbox 360 and PS3. on Dead Rising 2 with uh, Blue Castle Games. Uh, you know, the original Dead Rising was uh, was based, basically made by all Japanese staff. 
Um, and it was, you know, our first game that was geared towards uh, the Western audience. Uh, but with Dead Rising 2, we, want, we really wanted to uh, make it a, a Western game. So, uh, you know, we, we found uh, a good developer like Blue Castle and uh, development is going great with them right now. It's a sequel to Dead Rising. So, you know, we, we are adhering to the, the pillars of that franchise. Uh, but also adding uh, new features like the combo weapon system. It's a very collaborative work. Uh, we feel like we are both a team, uh, one team. Uh, you know, there are no real set rules. Uh, Capcom games have their own sort of, uh, I guess, feel to it. Um, so we try to keep that into, you know, keep that in Dead Rising 2. And yeah, it, we just, you know, give ideas back and forth and, you know, ideas become bigger and bigger and better. Dead Rising is about the cheesy 70s style uh, B-movie zombies and uh, we have tons of them. Um, we can render thousands on screen uh, and we really stick to that uh, in the game. So the, the tech we've made for it has, uh, in this particular demo we're showing is uh, about 1,200 zombies on, on the main street. Because we're doing uh, a bigger world than we had last time. So. You know, one of, one of the pillars of the franchise is density. Uh, other uh, sandbox games go for just size, uh, but uh, in Dead Rising, it's density. You know, we are we are doing a bigger world, but we want to make sure there's always something uh, within 10 feet of the player to pick up and beat zombies with, and because of that, you need zombies around as well. And some of the weapons we're using are a lot more devastating on the zombies, so we need more to keep you uh, to, to keep them alive. You you know, you have to have more to, to play with. You know, the portable lawnmower that grinds zombies down to a stump. Most people are just blown away with that. Uh, the Tesla ball uh, turning like a steel uh, bingo ball cage into this uh, electrical shocking instrument by putting car batteries in it. Car battery can also work in, uh, in the electric rake as well, that you can, you can cattle prod the zombies and electrocute them to death. There's, there's a ton of stuff you can do in the combo weapon system. And uh, we've invested a lot in, into that as a, as a core piece of the game, including, you know, hint systems so that you can build them yourself, discover them before we even give you the recipe of what to do. So there's a lot of ex exploration. The big announcement today is that uh, we've announced Prologue for Dead Rising 2. Uh, the title is uh, Case Zero. It's a standalone uh, DLC. It'll fill in some of the gap between uh, DR1 and DR2. Uh, it'll feature Chuck. Um, it won't be a, a demo. Uh, it'll be a, a completely uh, a complete game by itself. So I think you know people who are fans can pick that up and you know get into the Dead Rising 2 world and you know help them lead into you know when they buy the game. So Dead Rising 2 is coming out uh, on uh, August 31st in North America and uh, September 3rd in uh, Europe. Uh, and Prologue, since it's a prologue, it'll come out earlier. We haven't really decided on a date yet, but you know, we hope to you know get it out as soon as possible. You gotta, if you're a fan of the, of the of the last one, you have to see this. You gotta play it. <laughs>